For the brand new Adidas Code Chaos 25 are Marmite. You're either gonna love the look of them or hate the look of them. So if these golf shoes make you wanna scratch your eyes out, then I suggest you watch this video instead. However, if you don't mind the look of these shoes, or in fact, absolutely love the look of these shoes, then stick around because I've given them a serious on-course test. I'm gonna tell you how they fit and feel, what I like about them and what I don't like about them. I bought these shoes with my own money to do this review. If you find it helpful at any point, tap the like and subscribe button and let's get into it. Now these retail for 140 pounds in the UK or the BOA version retails for 150 pounds. In terms of sizing, I would definitely recommend going up at least half a size compared to your natural shoe size. Compared to previous iterations of the Code Chaos, they have definitely added some additional room in this toe box area. There was a surprising amount of width here. Certainly plenty of room to wiggle your little tootsies around in the shoes. That being said, they still give a nice locked in feeling. I didn't have any issues whatsoever with my heel slipping at the rear of the shoe. In terms of comfort underfoot, Adidas have used a combination this time of the Boost foam, which we all know is lovely and soft and squishy, but they've also combined it with the Light Strike foam as well, which is a slightly firmer foam, which I think gives actually better energy return. The combination of the two means that this shoe still feels nice and soft. In fact, it's very, very comfortable, but it is certainly a little bit firmer compared to previous iterations of the Code Chaos. The outsole has had an update and redesign. You've still got this very aggressive spikeless traction pattern on the bottom. The rubber being used is really quite firm. So although you could drive if you wanted to in these shoes, these aren't really shoes that have been designed to wear on the course as well as off the course. Of course, you can wear these in the clubhouse, not a problem, but they're not really designed to be worn socially. The looks and design of the shoe have had an update. It is still this very aggressive, bold, striking style. Now you've got this kind of underneath the upper that you can definitely feel this kind of ripple pattern that looks really, really unique. You've got this zigzag pattern on the back and the kind of sloping off of that rear section and the combination of the white black and the neon really is just a bold striking colorway. Adidas have given you a one year waterproof warranty with these shoes and that means that that upper will keep that water out. However, I did my full waterproof test in these shoes and I poured 300 milliliters of water over both the upper on the toe box as well as the bottom part of the laces. And you can see here that water will get through that bottom part of the laces, which means that if you are playing in very, very wet conditions, your feet are at risk of getting a little bit wet in these shoes. Now I can confirm that for sure because I played in some torrential conditions. It really rained heavy for two hours nonstop and my feet were absolutely soaked by the end of that session. So let's move on to what I like about these shoes and I've got to admit, there is a lot to like. First of all, I'm a massive fan of the comfort you're getting when you wear these shoes, both in terms of underfoot comfort, as I mentioned before, the combination of the Boost and the Light Strike foam, although firmer than previous, is a very, very comfortable feeling underfoot. But add to that the additional room in the toe box there. This is a very nice, comfortable place to be. They don't feel particularly narrow. And although there isn't a huge amount of padding on the ankle and the heel, as well as the tongue, there's enough there and it just fit my foot nicely, which means that I wore these straight out of the box for 18 holes, walking the course, and I didn't get any blisters whatsoever, not even a hint of a blister. Overall, I'd say that these are one of the most comfortable pairs of golf shoes that have been released in 2024. For a pair of spikeless golf shoes, these are definitely aiming at on-course performance as well. These aren't a casual pair of shoes that you can wear on and off the course. You can see that they have definitely increased the width of the base of these shoes, and that's gonna help with the stability of them as well over previous models. And you've got a enlarged torsion plate in the middle of the shoe here as well. And those combine to mean that you've actually got quite a stable shoe there. It's 
you know, it's got a little bit of twist in it, but there are other spikeless golf shoes that I've tested that will twist far more than these. So again, these are very, very impressive in terms of the actual stability that you are getting on the course. Same goes for the traction as well. This is a very aggressive spikeless traction system that you're getting right across the outsole. And when I was wearing these during that incredible two hour downpour, the conditions underfoot were really, really wet and slippery, and I did not slip once in these shoes. I also really like the feeling of being really locked into this shoe, as well as actually being quite close and connected to the ground. I didn't feel that I was stacked up too high. That's something that you can experience sometimes when the midsole foam, especially with that boost midsole foam, is kind of too thick, really. Yes, you get a really cushioned feeling when you get loads of boost midsole, but it means that you can feel a little bit disconnected from the floor. I didn't have that feeling whatsoever. I really enjoyed playing my golf in these. One thing that I personally like with the design of these shoes, and in particular this colorway, is that it is a nice sporty silhouette. I appreciate that it's not a casual pair of shoes that you'd wear off the course, but I think that it means from a styling point of view, you can actually really kind of wear these with anything. They're gonna go with shorts, trousers, or personally, I really like wearing these with a pair of golf joggers as well. And in this colorway, I like the combination of the white, the neon, and importantly, quite a lot of black in these shoes as well, meaning that you're gonna be able to pair them with a lot of different outfits, so long as you're comfortable with the bold style and color choices. If you do want something a little bit more subdued, then they do have a black colorway of these as well. Before I move on to my dislikes, which there are a couple that I want to mention, if you wanna keep up to date with all the latest and greatest golf deals before they sell out, then make sure you sign up to my free monthly golf deals newsletter, where I handpick the best deals that I see online every month and send them straight to your inbox. It takes 10 seconds to subscribe and it really helps support the channel. So moving on to my dislikes, my first one is the use of some of the softer materials around the ankle and the heel means that it does kind of stain and mark up in quite a few areas a little bit more easily than I would like. You can see here around the collar, it's kind of grayed a little bit already. Now I have actually cleaned these with warm soapy water after playing quite a few rounds of golf in them and this is how they've come up. And in fact, if I kind of show you this one here, I couldn't really get rid of that staining on the tongue on this one. Again, with this material on the underside, it feels like it's got a coating over the top of it, but I got a feeling that this is gonna kind of gray up over time as well. So in terms of keeping these looking box fresh, especially if you get them in these lighter colorways, I'm not entirely convinced how well you're gonna be able to do that, especially if you're playing in the more muddy, wintry, rubbish conditions that we have here in the UK. Another potential issue with these shoes is simply that bold, aggressive design. Now, personally, I don't dislike that. I quite like having a pair of shoes or a style on the course that stands out and pops and is quite bold and unique. However, if you're looking for a pair of, you know, something a little bit more toned down, if you're not a big fan of the neon, if you don't like the kind of white electric stripe design going on here with the Adidas three stripes, you're not feeling this very unique ripply material on the underside of the upper, then these probably aren't gonna be for you. So do I recommend the Adidas Code Chaos 25 shoes? Yeah, absolutely I do. These tick the boxes in so many aspects that you want in a pair of golf shoes. They're really comfortable on the course, they perform really well and offer you plenty of traction, and they look good, assuming that you think they look good. I think the new wider fit in the toe box is a great improvement compared to the previous version, and I think that these are a big contender for the best golf shoes of 2024 which means that Adidas are having a really good year because I also think that their brand new Tour 360 range for 2024 is also a contender for shoe of the year. Now they are a slightly more formal style spiked shoe from Adidas. So if you're interested in those, I've included my full review of them right here. But if you wanna see an alternative spikeless pair of shoes that are 40 pounds cheaper than these and have a more classic reserve styling, then check out my full review of the Puma Avant golf shoes, which I've included a link to right here.